This is Chrysler's collision detection. No, this doesn't have anything to do with a vehicle crash. It is collisions of data. It's a multiplex network using multiples uh, modules. It's used for scan tool and mobile communicate and module to module communications. It's got a 7812 baud rate. It's very noise or EMI tolerant, electromagnetic interference. This is because of a twisted pair. It's very much like and very much akin to CAN. No. The modules, the drivers have a bias that places a voltage on each wire and a termination resistor is used to develop this bias. This is what the signal looks like. We'll go look at it live so you can see it. I uh, want you to understand something very specific about this and it's very important to understand how we hook our scope up. We're trying to make sure you understand their data burst taking place here that this is not a continuous transmission. That's why we take the time in each one of these protocols to make sure you have the opportunity to look at a video recording of a live lab scope pattern so you can get a feel for it. And we'll go and stop it and do some more discussion and talk about it and talk about diagnostics. But now you should have a feel for what we're going to be looking at. Let's look at the circuit. On this example, engine scan data isn't shown. We didn't have room. We left off the SCI. We cut that off of this because with this thing is full up the way it is. On this example, we have something else too. We have another data bus here. It's for the rear uh, wheel analog brakes. It's the basic system. It's not on CCD. However, if you have four channel ABS, it is on the CCD bus. Uh, this is the twisted pair we're talking about. This is what it looks like in the wiring harness right here. You see this blue with white tracer and blue with red and white tracer all twisted together there. Uh, I guess it's white and black, whatever. The differential circles have a mirror image of each other on each side of the twisted pair. And this is very important for you to understand this. By the way, this does have a good junction connector. Here's what it looks like when we go to test it. We're going to hook our scope up in a very specific way. We're using one channel. Let me say it one more time. We're using one channel. Both sides hooked to the, of the scope hooked to the CCD circuit. In this diagram, you see it's on the red. The plus is going to pin 3. The black is going to pin 11. You do not have to have the scan tool connected in order to see communications because this is intermodule communications. Now, just one more time, one channel. Look back where we have them connected. If we only hook up one channel, this is what we get. If you look at the very small squiggles, it's a meaningless waveform. You're going to get about two and a half volts and it's going to sit there. That little squiggle is the data. You just can't see it. But if you use differential the way we're telling you, we get this 284 millivolt signal. What size did I say? I said about 284 millivolts from zero up to 284. There is the signal. This is the signal you were trying to look at here. The little squiggles there, when you hook differentially, it's very important. Now, it's not important. I've tried to work with people. I can't say how important this is. People try to say, well, can I use one scope pattern? Questions answered, debates over. Look at the little squiggles on the other. If that's what you want to look at, this is what you should be looking at because we can see all of our things happening here. The differential circuit reduces the noise. It cancels it out, and we're going to talk about how it does this. This is a 284 millivolt signal. Any noise would wipe it out. So that's a you know, point in case. Now we're going to look at a differential amplifier. We're looking at noise. That's our input noise. They're the same on the plus circuit and the minus circuit. We look at the plus circuit. It comes through just the way it was. This is a one-to-one -one amplifier. 
But if we look at the minus circuit, it comes through inverted. Back that up. Plus circuit comes straight through. We inverted it. Now we've just taken the noise and canceled it out. Why? Because when we add the two together, we get zero volts. The differential amp adds the two signals together after it inverts one of them. And bingo, we get zero volts. Look at the bottom. They're out of phase. You add them together, they come back to the middle. When one's going high, the other's going low. That's what differential noise reduction does. The same technique is used in CAN. Now, how a module places information from the bus is a little bit different than anything else. It's going to give you a good preview of how CAN is going to work. Only the PCM and, and IPC terminate the circuit. Remember, we're going to terminate it with resistors. Down there at the black arrow is a 120 ohm resistor across the output. Two modules have this. Again, remember, IPC and the PCM. This is a voltage divider network down here. Let's see how that works. One is going to increase current flow. One's going to decrease current flow to put signals on there. Boom. Let's look at how we get a bias on here. We got five volts. It comes down to the, to the minus circuit. Goes over to the 120 ohm termination resistor. Goes through that resistor back over to the bias plus goes to ground through a 13k ohm. What do we have? We got 13k ohms at the top, 13k ohms at the bottom, slightly unbalanced by 120 ohms, so we wind up with 251 on the minus bus, 249 volts on the plus volts. Back to ground, we've started at 5 volts, got the ground, divided it up, and we're at ground return now and back down. Here's the path of the voltage divider. It develops bias. If that resistor is removed, it's not going to be the same. When we get ready to transmit, we got two amplifiers. They're current drivers. They're going to drive plus and minus, and they're going to one is going to invert, and one's not going to invert. So what's going to happen? We send a signal to the two drivers, and the two drivers work the opposite of each other. They change the effective circuit resistance of each leg meaning they change the voltage drop slightly, just a few millivolts. Now, what are we looking at here? Since it's differential, dominant and recessive signals are really easy to understand. Recessive is zero because both amps are setting at 250 millivolts. 2.5 volts, I should say. One's at 249, one's at 251. So we're a tenth of a volt off of zero here. But that's recessive. Dominant, it goes high. Now, we talked about a lot of modules talking. CCD, collision detection. Any module can talk when the bus is idle. When it sees zero volts, any modules. Modules will stop talking if they can't verify the message. Low-priority modules remain quiet for a longer period than high-priority modules, and that's how it shares things, and we could show you how they do that if it was really important. But let's take a look at things. When a good signal, CCD signal goes bad, it gives us some very definite patterns. We need to understand the failures because understanding these failures and is going to help us diagnose CCD. We're going to go put our scopes in here. Remember, we're hooking them up differentially, pin 3 and 11, plus in 3, and uh, minus in 11. We should get a good signal. This is what it'll look like. And the only difference is if you hook them up wrong, they'll be inverted. But it just messes with your mind. So what happens if this signal doesn't look good like this? What do we do? If the signal isn't correct at pin 3 and 11, Remember, we're looking at the whole world. We can use the voltage to see if we have contact at the termination resistor. Do we have 249 on the positive bus? Do we have 251 on the minus bus? That tells us that at least we have termination resistors. And remember, only two modules have termination resistors, the instrument cluster and the PCM. Either one of those connected, and we have bias. If they're both disconnected, we don't have bias. 
by verifying the bias, we know that at least continuity to one of the two. We're not sure which, but we know one of those two are hooked up. So now we're going to have to isolate the modules. But remember, we got this nice joint connector. Joint connector number three. It's in the power distribution center. We've talked about it before. We pulled that out. And now we can go and look at each one. For this circuit to work, it must have 120, 120 ohm termination resistor. And only the PCM and IPC terminate the circuit. We've opened it up. They're no longer terminating the circuit. So what we're going to have to do is if everything is working, we're going to see 5 volts down on the minus volts, on the minus, with the plus going to zero. That means there's no termination. We've isolated a module. It doesn't have a termination resistor. This would also be the situation you would have if you had broken wires. 5 volts goes to B plus, uh, goes to bus minus, and then stops. It has no place to go. There is no resistor. In doing our testing with them isolated, we're going to have to supply our own resistor. For all other modules, other than the IPC and the power and the uh, PCM, we're going to use our own module, our own 120 ohm. When we do that, we'll supply bias and see if that module starts communicating. Here's how we do it. On the left here, we've put in 120 ohms, and we're going to hook those up. Then we're going to hook our leads up from our DSO and our VOM over here on the right. So we got the same leads. we got our two wires hooked up. We're supplying a termination of our own with our, our decade resistor box, and we're looking at the voltage. Here's what our circuit looks like. We're looking at the ABS controller. It's on pin 6 and 3. So if we hook 20 ohms in there, now the APS controller will start talking if this module is working. You can use this same technique in CAN. It works very well. We go back here. We've got scope pattern. we got normal bias. What does that tell us? Because we went in here and put our own 120 ohm resistor in, and it talks normal, and we have normal signal, we know that that is not the problem. We walk down through all the modules till we find the one that doesn't have the proper bias and doesn't talk to you. Remembering again, repeating myself, you don't have to put the 120 ohm in at the instrument cluster, but if you do, it will do no harm. If you put it in the IPC, it'll do no harm. So if you want to keep it simple and not worry yourself, put the 120 ohm in every one of them, see which one won't talk to you or which one's hanging the circuit high. Fix the wiring. If you can't get bias, fix the module if it's grouped up. You can verify U-codes. Sometimes when only one module quits working, you get a nice U-code on the status screen for Chrysler, and that tells you you've got to go work on the electronic instrument cluster. How do we find out? We go there and look for a normal signal and see if it's right. If it's right and the module isn't working, change the module. Now, this completes CCD. If you have any questions about Chrysler collision detection, remember it has nothing to do with a crack, go back and review it. Remember those failure patterns and biasing and all of that will help you work through this faster. In interactive video, we go through here fast, but remember going back, you can always hit the pause button and stop and see what things are doing and repeat the section as many times as you need to.